All right, so welcome this afternoon about to talk about XDebug. Uh, the title is actually XDebug for uh, Symfony developers. Now, I have to admit, I started looking at Symfony not more than a week ago. So I don't know Symfony very well, but I know XDebug very well. And I ran into some issues uh, not knowing what the hell to do with Symfony. So I did consider for a moment changing this talk into um, using XDebug to figure out what the hell Symfony is doing instead of XDebug for Symfony developers. So we'll, it will be a little bit of a mix of both. Now, how many of you have not used Symfony before? Okay, that's very good. That's only me raising the hand. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, how, how many of you have used XDebug before? Okay, that's a lot of people. So if you already have used it before, what are you doing here? That, that sounds a bit as a silly question, but I actually mean it seriously. What are you trying to get out of this talk? Sh shout something at me. Oh, you're shy. Okay. Well, if, if you don't want to mention it, then that's fine as well. Anyway, uh, let, let me get started here. So I'm Derek. I'm Dutch, but live here in London. Uh, I work for MongoDB. I work on the Peach Private for that. This talk has absolutely nothing to do with that, except that I'm wearing a T-shirt. Um, I also wrote XDebug as one of my uh, hobby projects <coughs> over the think the past 12 years or something like that. So it's been quite some time. All right, so it's basically three things. Uh, it is good as a development aid. Uh, I know Symfony has this really nice fancy stack trace thing already in there, but I'll get back to that in a moment, saying why I think it's not good enough. Uh, controversial comments there. Uh, and I'll be looking at live debugging and a bit of profiling as well. And now, let me get started. So <laughs> the original idea is that um, XDebug is there in PHP to make, um, well, the original point was to make it, to make PHP actually do useful things where you get errors. Now, uh, for example, in those days, you get an error message like this, right? What does this really say? I mean, it basically tells you that there's an empty document, but how the hell you got here in this application? You had never have any idea because it misses a few things here, right? It misses a stack trace. So that's the first thing that I'll check, uh, XDebug, which is a big stack trace. So, yes, this one isn't orange, as you can see. Now, of course, in, um, with, with Symfony, Symfony already steals the stack trace away from you, right? So if you, if you have a look at that, now if I remember my domain names correctly, That's a very high IP number. <laughs> of course, this is a live demo. Now, in Symfony, so for this presentation, because I don't know Symfony at all and didn't have the time to write an application in Symfony in, in a week's time, really, I, um, I used something else that I was slightly familiar with. It's Easy Publish. It's a company I used to work for in Norway years and years ago. And they recently started having a, a Symfony based part of the application. So I thought, well, that's a good enough point for me to look at because I know how this application works. How wrong was I? <laughs> it has changed a lot. But there's a few things that are still the same. So uh, when I was installing this application, at some point, uh, yeah, it asked for installation details and it asked for a MySQL socket connection. Now, my MySQL knowledge is by now absolutely zero. But uh, I, I still know a little bit how to hack around this thing. So what I, what I expect is to get a very nice XDebug orangey stack trace. Orange is my favorite color. That's why you get uh, orange things in, in XDebug. But yeah, in Symfony, you sort of don't get this, right? You get, you get more of this. And it has a few nice things in here, like it has a cute icon. That's always good. It has a cute icon. It tells you, uh, unable to connect to the database server. That's all right. It does exist, but um, yeah, and it's even running but it can't connect to it. And you get the stack trace here, which is really quite helpful. So you get the stack trace here, and it's a bit small. I probably can make that big there. Um, it's a bit small, but you get like the nice uh, line numbers here, right? So what it misses, in my opinion, is I can't click on any of those lines, and it opens in my editor. Oh, that does work. That is cheating. That didn't work yesterday. <laughs> 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 anyway. Very handy, it opens right where you want it now in your editor. So I'm using VI. I am by far not a, not a PHP Storm guru like the person bef before me. He went so fast with PHP Storm, I was kind of like, wow. But I'm pretty good with VI. Now, it still doesn't quite tell me where this went wrong, right? 
Uh, I know the, the exception got thrown at this line, but that's normally quite good enough. But you can click on the lines. Now, I still prefer seeing the orange stack traces in, uh, in XDBook, mostly because it does add a bit more information. It adds more information because in some cases here, um, <coughs> like if you have an object, it doesn't show you the arguments of the object or uh, any of the properties in it. And with XDBook, you do see that information. And there's a reason for that that you can't see it here is because PHP itself doesn't export that information. So simply can't retrieve that information from PHP. But uh, so I was thinking, well, how do I fix this, right? How, how can I tell Symfony not to show its fancy stack phrases? Anyone wants to guess how I found out to fix that? By removing the line in the code. So where did that go go? I had a nice, sorry, I have so many things open here that I'm a bit lost myself. That's about whiskey and something else. Where did it go? Where did it go? Well, it's easy enough to find anyway. I can't stop that one because of my application. Oh, I can do this. So my trick for this is was just finding, um, uh, I just did a grab for, let me make that big, a bit bigger. I just grabbed for a set error handler because that's, I know that originally Easy Publish had exactly the same problem, so I knew what to look for. So there's one in there that says in Symphony set error handler with two of the Sorry, I need to make it a bit smaller, otherwise there's too many lines. Um, where did it go? It was in vendor somewhere, Symphony debug error handler. There we go. Uh, I already have it open somewhere, but that doesn't matter. So if I remove this one, yeah, I've already added code because there's more slashes in here, as you can see. So uh, I had to actually disable the setting of the error handler so that I could get my nice orangey stack traces again. Oop. That makes sense. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> Sorry, too many things open here. So let me start the application again, and then when I reload it, then hopefully. And it still doesn't work, right? I did plan this, but uh, the orange stack traces add more information here, and it adds more information as much as you want in it as well. And I'll go back to the slide itself, um, because here she can see it only has simple variables, right, or simple arguments. But if there's an object, you can instruct it to get the objects in there with all the properties in there as well. Now, what I would like to see at some point is some integration between XDBug and Symfony that that gives Symfony the possibility to use XDBug's enhanced methods and capabilities as well. That, that will mean that there needs to be some change in, in Symfony, but also some in XDBug. But I would be happy to have a look at that, because I do think there's a benefit of having this loaded as well. Well, you've been spoiled with all the nice stack traces already in Symfony, so we're not looking at that. But there's a few other things in here as well. Uh, anybody of you familiar with Vardump? Vardump? Dumps out variables, right? Now, so in the same bit of code that I had here, um, I wanted to do a vardump of the handler, uh, just to see what was in there, just for the fun. So let me uncommand that as well, and restart the web server. Oh. Ah, it even does it on the command line. That's pretty cool. I hadn't seen that either. Uh, but if I do that in the application, then it gets it renders it really nicely like this first, as you saw. Uh, let me start it again because it's slow enough. And then Symphony. Uh, how do you call it, Symfony style sheets load. And they tell that nicely uh, all the elements in HTML that are pre, and it tells, tells it not to use pre white space. And I found it a bit annoying. So in order to make this better, uh, there needs to be a style sheet change to Symfony that does not do that for XDBook specific error output, and it has a specific class on that. Something else that I need to look at fixing. At the moment, I found more problems with, well, in my case, in my opinion, more problems with Symfony than I actually was writing my presentation, right? And that is before I even got the stuff running in the first place. Right, so there's a few different options here. Like for error messages as well as Vardam, you can configure how many levels deep you will have information in there, how long the strings are that you want in there, and there's a few different options here. Another thing that is actually already showed is something called XDBook file link format. So I've set it up in my environment already. And apparently Symfony is reading this information because it uh, knows about it and uses it, um, which allows me to open errors or lines directly in my editor like you saw. 
Now you can, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> you can set it up for many other editors as well. I just do it with GVIM because I'm a Vim person. Uh, you can do it with NetBeans, but I figured out that it's a bit of a tricky thing because you need a plugin to, no, sorry, not NetBeans. PHP Storm has it as well, but you need a plugin to PHP Storm so that you can do remote opening of files, otherwise you can't do that. Um, and I think that I should write a uh, blog post about that. Just a show of hands, how many of you are using NetBeans here? Uh, PHP Storm? I would say PHP Storm wins this one. Yeah, very good. <laughs> It's a good thing that I set it up earlier then to show. All right, so let me continue a little bit. So yeah, I've shown the pretty printing of variables already. Don't have to show that again. Um, there's, uh, this actually also works on the command line, which I can show you if I abort this and make it a bit bigger. Can you, can you read the text here? I know it's in the bottom. Let me see if I can fix that. There. So there's another uh, XE book switch called yeah, I think that really should be with a U, but everything in PHP uses American English. But uh, uh, and you can see the difference, right? It now shows up in color. So it's just something new in a recent XD book, which is actually really handy uh, if you're into nice, pretty things. Um, okay, back to the presentation. So there's a few options in it that you get to play with. Now, by default, the options for this is actually really restricted because in some cases you get just too much information, like. In early XDBook versions, it actually would allow you to have a big stack trace of every function that you called at the end of the script. However, if you do that, then you end up sometimes rendering 200 megabytes of HTML tables, and your browser doesn't really like that very much, or at least mine didn't. Right, so yeah, I showed you those colors. Um, there's also something really interesting in XDBook, it's called the screen operator. I'm not sure how much code you have seen that uses the at operator everywhere. Um, in places where you don't expect it really, like MySQL Connect, which is a really annoying point of doing it because suddenly the application doesn't work right. It works fine, it worked fine in, in, in a web environment, it didn't work on a command line. And MySQL was of course running and we had no idea what, what was going on. So we figured out that somebody thought it would be clever to silence uh, errors to MySQL Connect. But instead of silencing the error, it would also suppress the error that says MySQL isn't loaded. And um, we figured out in the command line, we had forgot to lo load uh, MySQL shared object. And this took us about half a day. So XDBook has, a, since then, that day, <laughs> a, uh, an option to turn off the ads operator. Um, so if you have lots of code base that you've never seen before, turn this on if you have problems. And you sometimes see lots of new errors showing up. And then you know why, because somebody thought it would be good to silence that. Now, there's a few legitimate users of the ad operator, like some of the some of PHP's um, uh, network functions. They're very noisy and chatty, even if there's like transient things or things that are not really a problem. It will return an error value, but it will also give you a notice, which is really really annoying. Um, so in some cases, you do have to use the ad operator. But this is actually quite handy. I call it Screen. This is the Screen by anyone who who misses again. Munk, yes, there we go. There's four of them, by the way. All right, so uh, another thing that I want to have a look at is tracing. And tracing is an excellent tool for figuring out what an application is doing if you have never seen it before. <coughs> like in my case, I've never seen Symfony before. Or even more, I haven't seen Easy Publish using Symfony before. So tracing is basically a way how uh, you can see every single line being executed. Every line, every variable assignment, every return value, that's it. And there's a few different ways on how you can do those traces. So you can do textile traces, and textile traces are basically, uh, well, it's, it's more fun to show, isn't it? I think it's more fun to show. So yes, I'm opening yet another terminal window. I, I noticed it. So if you have this functionality turned on, uh, there will be a list of files called XT here, and I have a few here. <coughs> I have a few files here mostly because I've configured XDebug to actually create a new a, a file with a different name depending on the URL that you're passing in, which is really quite handy 
if you're on a system that actually roots everything to, to index.php because you don't want everything to show up under index.php, right? You want the whole URL in there as was passed uh, in your get request. So there's an option for that in Xdebug to, to show that. Um, I won't show all the options because there's lots of them, but I can open one of those files here. So let's open this one, just because I feel like it. Now, there's one issue often is that those files are really, really large. And even though VI is really good with very large files, it isn't very good syntax highlighting 242 megabytes of text. So I will abort that. Uh, yes. Come on. Oh, there we go. I have to press Control C two times. So this is syntax highlighted, but only for the first 20%. I don't worry about that. So yeah, this is basically how, how a trace file looks like. You get a um, start point and end point. Sorry, st the start time index, and this is the start of the script. So it doesn't start at zero because there's a bit of overhead par parsing the first script. So this is why it starts at, what was it, a thousand of a second. It also shows you the memory usage. So it shows you there's at the moment 324 kilobytes in use. If you go all the way to the end, I will turn syntax highlighting off for a moment. Then you see this big number, and how much does this say? 55 megabytes of memory. That is a lot of memory that is being used here. Um, so I'm not quite sure whether that is very handy. Uh, but let me go back to the start, turn sin on. This takes some time, so I bore that. There we go. And now it's in different colors. I've never understood why that happens. Um, let me just open this again, get the nice colors back. <laughs> oh, life then was always so much fun. There we go. <laughs> I just press Ctrl C a few times and see what happens, basically. Uh, but there's in all the information here as well, right? You have the, the function, sorry, you have the location where it's happened, the name of the function, um, what the arguments are to function. As you can see, there's quite a lot of information here. So this is a small line, which is 200 characters already. Um, it also gives you the um, return values in green here. Now, of course, the syntax highlighting at the moment only works if you're using VI, which is a bit of a pity, but um, I'm sure I can persuade the, the JetBrains people to uh, add syntax highlighting for this kind of files as well. I like those people. They're really good to talk to. And they've had many questions about how to use Xdebug, so I don't quite well. Now, the other interesting thing, there's actually two functions called main. You see that? That is not supposed to happen. But the reason why this happens is that there's probably an auto prepend file. An auto prepend file is seen in PHP as, as, an, as a dink, distinct script to be run first. Um, so that's why there's main two times. Usually you don't see that. Um, but yeah, you can also see the variable assignments in there. So environment is set to false and then to production. Um, why they don't set it immediately to production? I don't know, but uh, you can have a look. So we can open the file by just pressing numbers. Okay, so, oh, okay, now I understand why does that, right? Because it reads the environment first. I don't have the environment variable set, and then it sets it to production. So that does make sense. Now, with a trace file like this, as you can see, this goes on for a while. Uh, it also shows you, let's see if we can find a quick example. <coughs> it also sh shows you variable additions. Like, if you have like an object already with a property, and an array in here, which has another array. It actually shows you like not only straight additions, but also additions to variables like plus equals or minus equals or point equals and stuff like that. So there's quite a lot of information here. But as I said, yeah, you, you need to be careful leaving this turned on, especially if you don't, if you request lots of different URLs, because those files do tend to get big. <coughs> and I have seen various different tweets saying, oh, I forgot to turn off xdebug again, and now my temp directory is full again. Because it does grow quite a lot. This trace source was for me really handy to figure out what was going on with this application. Now, let's see what else we have. Now, it is possible to only trace parts of it uh, by using functions that are called xdebug start trace and xdebug stop trace, or uh, things like that you can do as well. You can configure how many variable information you've seen those things again, and so on and so on. There's, however, the traces that you've just seen are actually quite good, but 
it is impossible for, for a tool to parse, right? Because it's all tab delimited and it's all text. So there's actually uh, a few other types that you can also use. Now, let me go out of full screen mode here for a moment. And go here, of course, you can't see it now. Okay, there's something in the bottom. It's actually quite tiny. It has StartX debug session and it has StartX debug profiler. I will get back to those in a moment. Uh, there's a newer version of the extension that also has a start tracing and that allows you to configure a few options. Uh, this extension doesn't have it yet or this browser profile doesn't have that extension yet. So I will now cheat and do it in another way. But uh, so give me a second. So I'll, I'll be awarding the script again. I will open my PHP INI. Here's a local PHP. I have a few PHP versions installed. How many? Quite a few versions installed. Um, PHP INI, there we go. Yeah, there's lots of weird stuff in here. Uh, where were we? So trace, trace. Enable trigger trace that is necessary for the extension. Auto trace, you definitely want to leave off. And as you want, you have your hard drive full very soon. But I'm looking at trace format. So another line that's kind of important, this line here, is basically I, want, I tell it how I want my trace files named. So it basically tells us it needs to start with trace, then dot one dot, why there's one dot in there. I don't know, but I probably put it in the previous demo. And then I have a percent capital H is the host name. And then percent capital R is your uh, get request information. So this is how you can configure how those files look like. But I've now set the trace format to one as uh, a joke. Let me also set auto trace to one. Please remind me to turn it off. Where did we go? Let me start this now. So now what this has done, requesting the SGL, actually I haven't requested anything yet, but let me do that now. I request it now, it dumps some information again. We wait a little bit here and see which trace files we have now. So we have gotten a different one, uh, namely the top one. It doesn't have anything after the URL because it was the homepage, but let me open this now. Nope. Oh, <coughs> apparently there is more than one now. It wasn't quite done yet. But let me open this again, turn off syntax highlighting, press some random buttons. And here you can see that the form is actually quite different, right? Um, it is actually parsable by tools now. It is tab de delimited. So anybody can write a tool to do something with this. And it would be awesome if, if for example, PHP Storm could use this as a very simple profile. Uh, I know PHP Storm supports Xebook normal profile output, but this one is do, to do this one is a lot faster. So that might be a good thing. And all about the same information is in here. Because the first number is your indentation level. Instead of having that indented, it's now just the number. Then the second column is your function ID. And the function ID increases every time you call a function. So main is, of course, function 0. Uh, one is the first function, and with zero and one here, you have both the entry point to the function as well as the exit point, and you have the time index for both of them, as well as the memory usage. You can very easily see which function increases the memory usage quite a bit. And we're doing some fancy calculation. You can actually figure out where, where in your code memory is leaking, up to a certain extent, because memory management in PHP can be quite tricky, and especially because there's a cyclic garbage collector in there that once and while kicks in. So even a function like split, which should increase in memory usage because the garbage collector kicks in at that moment, you might suddenly end up freeing two megabytes of memory. And of course, that makes no sense related to the function. But this is how PHP mem PHP's memory management works, and there's not much I can do about that. But let me continue. OK. All right, so the demo. So and the other thing that I'd like to show, which I think is very handy with, uh, with, uh, with complex applications like I think Symfony really is, is having the possibility to do, to do live debugging of it. Like me not knowing how this tool worked, right? So how did I find out where the line was 
where uh, why my my score connect didn't work right. So this is called remote debugging. It doesn't have to be remote. It has the word remote in it because it goes over a network connection. And the network connection can be in localhost. We don't have to do it, uh, but would also work over the internet as long as your firewalls allow that. Don't turn this on in production because it basically means that everybody on the internet gets to debug your application. It's not what you want to do uh, because you can see everything. Now, there's again a few things, um, um, many, many different clients. So if you're not using either NetBeans or PHP Storm, then basically any other ID that supports PHP will have support for XDebug um, debugging in there. So there's, yeah, there's tens, dozens, really, of, of clients that you can use. There's even a plugin for VI, which apparently is really good, but I've never, yeah, I've never used because I'm happier with, um, with things like PHP Storm or Komodo. Um, I have to mention Komodo here because Komodo is sort of the first editor that had support for debugging, and I still think it has the best debugger protocol implementation. Um, if PHP Storm gets to that point, or if NetBeans gets to that point, that'd be really handy. So I've been uh, trying to push on them for that, but it's not quite there yet. So yeah, there's a whole lot of extensions. Um, you basically have to make two settings. Actually, you have to make only one setting, but um, I'm still showing all three of them. Mostly because you need to turn it on, which is remote enable. And then you need to tell the host. And the host, you should give the host name or the IP address of the machine where your IDE is running on. So if it's OK for you to run a web server somewhere on Amazon, but the address that you need to provide is the, machine, is the IP address of the machine where your IDE runs on. Now, if this is in your corporate network, after behind a NAT firewall or a NAT device, then that won't work. So you need to do some tricks around that. You can make it work, but there needs to be some tricks around that to make sure that uh, yeah, you can get the traffic to your ID in that case. Now, the port number is also sort of important because Xdebug always has used port 9000. What else uses the port 9000 now? PHP FPM, which is really, really annoying. Um, I was first. Mine is mentioned in Wikipedia. But, um, <laughs> So yeah, it, if you use PHP FPM, you need to change this number. Or you need to make PHP FPM run on a different number, whatever you, you prefer. And you need to change it in the ID as well, of course. And that's, yeah, there's one other option which is really handy. So if you don't want to specify an IP address because you, yeah, you use DHCP on your laptop or whatever, and the IP address changes all the time, then it's also possible now to have a, a setting called XDBIG Remote Connect Back which will try to connect back to the machine that initiated the, the debugging request. And the machine that initiates the debugging request is a machine where your browser runs on. So your browser doesn't have to run on the same machine as your IDE, of course. And in those cases, if that's the case, this setting won't work. But if your IDE runs on the same environment as where your browser runs into, remote connect back is the setting to go for. And that's by far easier than trying to figure out which IP address to connect to. So in general, turn this one on and forget about the host. Right. Right. So on the command line, there's a few things, a few settings that you have to make. Uh, it's not very interesting. But by far the easiest to do is, <coughs> is to install one of the browser extensions. So for Firefox, there uh, was an extension called uh, XDebug Helper. And then that developer disappeared, and there was a new extension called Easy XDebug. And then that developer disappeared, and now it's an extension called The Easiest XDebug. <laughs> so I'm not sure what happens when this developer disappears, and, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully that doesn't happen, because the extension is actually really quite good. Now, there's also a helper for Chrome called XDebug Helper for Safari, for Opera, but not for IE. I'm not sure nobody's ever written on. Is it even possible to write plugins for IE? Does anybody know? You can, but do you know how to do it? I have no idea. Either. And I, I haven't written any of those, those extensions because I don't do front end stuff, really. So I don't care about your browser so much. In any case, install whatever browser you like, install one of those, those extensions. Also, there's no extension for links. 
right. Anyway, um, so in XDBook 2.2, I added some functionality to actually um, uh, figure out um, how when debugging doesn't work. So it has a function called remote log. If you find a, 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 a bug report in XDebug that has to do with remote debugging, the first thing I will ask, can you also give me the remote log for it? Because it is so incredibly handy for me to see what is actually going on the wire. And so far, only one out of the cases it was actually XDebug having a problem, and all the rest of the cases it was IDEs not doing the correct thing. So anyway, but it, it tells you exactly that it was trying to connect and couldn't connect and things like that is really quite handy to see. All right, so this is how NetBeans looks like, this is how PHP Storm looks like, and this next thing is going to be the demo. All right, so let me find... All right, so here I have this environment again, right? So I am starting an XDebug session. So whatever browser extension you install doesn't really matter. It will always sit here in the, in the bottom corner wherever browser plugins, put icons, I don't know any other browsers. So clicking XDebug session, and bear in mind, this is a live demo. This might not work the first time around. I click it, and it now has like this little, uh, which one is starting it? I think this is starting it. The icon isn't being very specific about that. But if I load this, absolutely nothing happens, of course. But I can explain it in this case, because I don't actually think I have it listening for debug connections. So turn it on in PHP Storm. That's the only thing you have to do if you use a recent PHP Storm. I don't actually use even use the latest one. But so you click the start listening for debug connections. We go back and request. And as you can see, absolutely nothing happens again. <laughs> um, but it makes a lot of sense because uh, it's basically XDebug has now connected to the IDE. <laughs> and that's what I thought. And it has not popped up here. Oh, how I love this live de debugging stuff. I did try this in a different browser profile, so let me try it here. OK, give me a sec. That's the thing with having some. OK, now I need to wait until the first page is loaded, which takes some time. And takes some more time. There we go. Let me try that again. So starting the debugging session here. It says it's using NetBean stuff, but it doesn't really matter. Load it again. And I hate when live demos don't work. Well, they work fine when you're at home in the morning. Why would this be? You know what? I'm going to stop this first and start it again. It's like, have you tried turning it off and on again? Also, this port number was giving me conflicts earlier. So let me try PHP Storm. Let me try this again. Yeah, yeah. It's telling me some nonsense. That's OK, now you have to wait for Java to start up. It's always fun. <laughs> and Lisa told you that I, had a, I have a license for it. So that's always a good thing as well. Okay, let me try this again. Now, this is so annoying. And now I have to debug the debugger. That's always fun as well. So, oh, I think I know the thing is. It actually does connect, but it doesn't break at the first line. So maybe if I do that, it should do that. I'm I find it so annoying. No, and it still doesn't work. This is just frustrating. No, not that stage. Success this time. Takes a while longer. That's usually a good sign. Yes, it has stopped. It has stopped. Brilliant. Anyway, I don't know. Sometimes it's not awake enough. But we stopped on the first line here now, which means that we can now step over code here. And stepping over code is, is a lot more easy if you actually have a um, breakpoint set somewhere, which I don't think I have. Uh, make this a bit smaller. 
So there's Oh, interesting. It hasn't remembered my files either. Annoying software. Anyway, let me just um, go a little bit and um, and so this was a brilliant demo, and it worked absolutely fine, of course. Uh, that's still doing something. Oh, I was just not patient enough. That happens sometimes. So you have, let, let me just go in a few different levels so that uh, you can see what happens. I think it has hit the error message by now. So let me scroll up here. Not sure what all those red lines here are either. So that it means it's, it probably means uh, white space violations or something. All right, so on the left-hand side, what we have here is actually we have the stack trace. So you can see here that uh, actually something wrong happened here, like the error handler kicked in. The error handler kicked in because of uh, my error, right? So what I really want to do is start all the way from the, st from the start, go step by step to see where my error happens. Now, that is way too much work. So let me open the correct file. So where was that again? It was in here. See, this is so complicated that you really need a bigger screen. <laughs> but I should be able to put in a um, breakpoint here. Continue with this. <coughs> Turn off the uh, first line here. Now, so there is one, one trick here, right? If you don't really know where the error happens, what you can do is put in, in your code base, a function called xdebug break. Let me see if I can do that. I have to stop the app, but <laughs> <coughs> let me see where it is. So let me put in here in register a function called xdebug break. <coughs> Start the application again. Reload this, <coughs> and now it, of course, stopped right where I want it um, on this line, right? So it stopped here at Zebra break. Now, the console I don't care about, but I have all the, the whole stack frame that ended, ended up here, right? So now we have the error handler, and this is still when we're jet registering the error handler. So um, to figure out why it actually didn't stop, because even though I disabled setting the error handler for some reason that it wasn't good enough for, for, for Symfony. But hovering over a, um, a variable gives its very simple um, value. But here in this overview here, you can actually go away. You can actually see um, uh, the contents of all the variables all the way down to its properties and arrays in there. I know this is a bit small. I looked at making this larger, but I couldn't find a setting for that. And yeah, but this um, was actually really quite cool that you can change the, the, the things as well. So I could, for example, change two to warnings if I want to do that. And it actually gets reflected while PHP is running. So if you, if you would debug through something and you find something, oh, this is clearly an incorrect value, but Redoing your whole debug session would take you another 50 minutes. And that can happen sometimes with complex cases. Then you can just cheat and change the value to what you expect it to be and continue debugging in case you find more errors. So it's actually quite a handy feature as well. Uh, I would suggest you, you have a play with this. The PHP Storm guidelines on setting this up is actually really quite good. And that means it's a bit more fiddly, I think, to get working. Uh, and there's always the issue about path mappings to make sure that yeah, the, the paths that xdebug sees and the paths that your IDE see might not always be the same, especially if it runs on two different machines. So you have to set up path mappings for that. Any case, um, this is about what I had to show. Are there any questions? And I'm sorry that the demos didn't work as well as they did this morning. Any, any questions? Should I ask questions? <laughs> I will ask questions then. So. Um, the people here that have used Eden Admins or PHP Storm, how many of you, you have done the live debugging? There's a few hands. So the rest of you haven't. 
do you think this may, is, is useful to have, to try out? Yes? OK, so please play with this. Because it saves you so much time. And I'm not just saying that because I wrote it. It's because it saved me a lot of time as well. That's the reason why I wrote XDBook in the first place. Anyway, let me go back to my slides. I think I have my, might have one more, uh, which is profiling. And I only have five minutes. So profiling is a way of showing you how the application performs. I'm skipping over the slides because they're not very interesting. I just wanted to show it very, very quickly. So besides the traces, you can also make profiling files. And they start with cache grind. So as you can see, as you can see, I have quite a lot of files uh, with all the different things that, oh, let me make that a bit larger. As you can see, there's quite a lot of files because everything goes through index.php and every, everything that's a PHP request ends up creating a profile file unless you turn it off. So let me just open one that is slightly large. Well, they're all slightly large. You know why? It's because all of those requests go through the easy, uh, go through some of the startup phases in both Symfony and Easy Publish. So that's why they tend to be five megabytes minimum. Uh, so I, I use a tool for that called um, Kcash Grind. And I just open it with a random URL, because that's more fun. Now, when I practiced this, I actually found out that, um, <laughs> you see this warning? I will read it up if you can't see it. It says, warning, a long lasting craft layout is in progress. Reduce node edges limit for speedups. So with most applications, it shows a really nice graph really, really fast. But um, sadly, this is so complex that it doesn't do it fast enough, and it warns you not to do that, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but I can't really do anything about it. If I go to a slightly uh, smaller thing, yeah, it even goes me error messages that it can't do it. But at some point, you get graphs like this. And those graphs will tell you exactly what the path through your application is. <coughs> Um, the profile gives you information about which functions are slow. Like there's two columns here, that's like the self column, basically tells how much time that specific function took, uh, depending on the whole request time, and it's in, in percentage. So it says 20% was spent in Symfony component class loader. Oh, see, that's always a bit of an annoying and cheeky one because everything goes through the class loader, which makes actually the call graphs really quite annoying. But basically, what it now says is that 21% of the time was spent in loading files or compiling PHP scripts or classes in this case. Now, this number will go away once you have APC or opcache loaded, because then it doesn't have to do this anymore. Um, but yeah, you should also have a play with this. And I can't really give you much advice, because every, every application is different. Um, and from what I understand, Symfony is so complicated that this tool will fall over it. So I think what needs to happen here is that um, from the trace files, those are a lot more accurate, but there's no good tool of visualizing it. Whereas this uses a profiling format file that is a lot more complex, but not very tailored for PHP applications. It's tailored for C applications that don't have this problem. So um, with that, I wanted to show the profiling. Uh, if you are interested in that, I would suggest you start doing that with very small projects, not with things like Easy Publish, which is a well, billion amount of code. All right, that's all I have to talk about. Again, any other questions? No? Yeah, one here. Are we ever going to see just in time debugging in PHP Storm? Are we ever going to see just in time de debugging with PHP Storm? You mean when? Uh, a, note, a warning or notice would happen. Well, there's a bug for this in a PHP Storm issue tracker, but it has been there for five years. Uh, lots of people vote on it because every time a person votes on it, I get an email. And I have a large collection of emails now. Um, at the moment, they seem to only want to implement this if you already have a project because they say it is too complicated otherwise. But it's not more complicated than, than just starting debugging at the start of your script. But for XDebugger, it doesn't man matter whatsoever. The moment it detects a warning or a notice, it will start opening a debugging connection. And whether that's at the start of the script or somewhere in the middle, shouldn't really matter. So I'm not quite sure why this is so much of a problem with PHP Storm, to be fair. Because it should already just work. But it doesn't, because uh, they do something silly, basically. 
But yeah, vote on that issue, please. And I can look up the number for you later. <laughs> All right, anything else? All right. Thank you very much. I hope this was useful. Uh, if you have further questions, feel free to email me. Also, please leave feedback at JoinedIn. I'm always uh, interested in figuring out what can I improve, except, of course, um, the, the live demos that don't always work when you expect them to do. But you can still leave that comment if you want to. Uh, slides will be available later on the URL you see there, or when you scan the QR code, you get to the same place. And that's it from my side. Thank you very much. <laughs>